showing that in many cases uh, an alternative interpretation is possible, that is philosophically sound, even if it is not mathematical, mathematically innovative. And the only thing we, we must do is recognize that the, ultimate, that the ultimate meaning is a philosophical meaning. The, the mathematical examples have a philosophical meaning, not a mathematical meaning for Aristotle. And we have to correctly understand the idiosyncratic role of mathematics in Aristotle philosophy. I will spend a few words about this point, then I will pass to the examples. For Aristotle, mathematics is not a demonstrative tool in physics and in philosophy in general. We are familiar with uh, physics, contemporary physics, that is a mathematical physics. And then uh, we use, uh, when we find a mathematical passage, we, we think about the mathematical demonstration. We think that mathematics is the natural the tool for doing physics. But for Aristotle, it, it is not possible for a metaphysical reason, a very deep metaphysical reason. Because for Aristotle, uh, the, the natural philosopher, the physicist, and the mathematician deal with two complementary aspects of the object. In fact, the natural philosopher finds his object of investigation by identifying identifying among the objects of experience those which contain in themselves their principle of change. And moreover, he studies them qua as having a principle of change. On the other hand, the mathematician deals with the same object as the physicist, but he considers them from another perspective that is not as changeable, but as independent of any changes, then it is evident that the mathematician is, cannot grasp the very essence of an object qua physical object. Then mathemat he, Aristotle used mathematical demonstration in his physics, but they are always uh, intended to explain, to prove some accidental property of the physical object he is considering. For example, we, fa uh, we found a lot of, of uh, demonstration concerning trajectory of motion, concerning speed, uh, time, and uh, the, the, the trajectory. But this is, for Aristotle, an accidental. Uh, feature of motion. Motion for Aristotle is something more, more, more complex. You know the definition of motion of Aristotle is the actuality of what potentially is qua such. And then to grasp, to formalize this concept I think is uh, clearly, clearly impossible and to use mathematics to explain it uh, mm, mm, is not possible. Then it, this doesn't mean that mathematical demonstrations are, are invalid. They are valid, but their results are philosophically incidental. Okay, but mathematics is important for Aristotle as a structure, structure of reference. Even if he thinks that mathematics cannot be the instrument for doing natural philosophy, he thinks that mathematics is a perfect, independent, uh, self-contained self system of knowledge and then can be used for uh, drawing analogies. He thinks that even if mathematics is not a framework of nature, it is an interesting structure in itself, a structure that cannot be imposed to the natural world, but can be, but can be imitated by the natural philosophy. The idea is that globally, mathematics serves as a paradigmatic example of demonstrative science and all other scientific disciplines must be constructed in an analogous way. This is, in short, the content of posterior analytics. But this is not true only on a global level, it is true also at a local level, 
because locally a particular pa a part of mathematics can be used uh, as, a, as a, a pattern for constructing some part of physics or other branches of knowledge. I think about uh, Aristotle's theory of natural motion that is constructed and is explained uh, making use of hydrostatics, that is a part of Greek mathematics, or the theory of perception in Aristotle that is constructed and in, is explained using the theory of proportion. We, we cannot find uh, demonstration with the theory of proportion, but we, we must know the theory of proportion in order to understand Aristotle's theory of perception. And also we can understand uh, Aristotle's uh, theorization of the potential infinite only if we know what is uh, iterative procedure in then uh, this is the, uh, usually uh, it is as for Aristotle mathematics where I was saying this an unproblematic realm was a simplified word can serve to clarify more complex states of affairs. And for drawing uh, his analogies, Aristotle considered mathematics locally, I say, but from two different points. He considered mathematics as a result, a systematized corpus of knowledge, but also as a work in progress. And this is the point I'm interested in in this talk. In fact, Aristotle is interested in the job of the mathematician. And he seems to know very well what is the job of the mathematician in the first part of his work, when he tries to solve problems. This aspect of mathematics is uh, that uh, we should advance here. I know that there is some, there is not a complete convergence, convergence of uh, uh, ideas, but uh, there is a, a, a lot of we need a lot of, of a lot of uh, experience and perception and other faculties and that are not formalized, for, can, that cannot be formalized, and even though these part of the job of the mathematician is obviously, obviously connected with a proof because it precedes a proof, it doesn't, it doesn't coincide, coincide with the proof and it doesn't leave any trace in mathematical textbook. Uh, Euclid problems are something completely different from the job of solving problem of the mathematician. They are the result, the formalized result of this job. But there is a lot, a part, a big part of the job of the mathematician that leaves no traces. And this, in this sense, mathematics is, uh, is a little bit different from <laughs> other branches of knowledge, like as physics, for example, because of here there is not Alain, but uh, he was talking about uh, how Bernoulli was using uh, his this analogy of vortices. Because we we have some uh, some paper where Bernoulli wrote this. We have the history of physics that can give to us some information about what was the way of thinking of the philosopher. And in mathematics, we have no this because mathematics when we reach a mathematical result, we can put it in a formalized way and then we can forget all we have done in order to obtain the results. For this reason, it is very difficult to find some information and for this reason, I think it is very hard to understand and to, to identify in mathematical passage, passages in Aristotle the proof he was interested in. Maybe he was not interested in a particular proof, in a particular result we can find in a mathematical book, but he, he was interested only to give some insight of proof. Then I think that you have to, we have to look at mathematical passages in Aristotle's text with another 
from another point of view. I will briefly sketch what is the usual interpretation of some uh, mathematical passage in Aristotle. And I will briefly say what are the problems, what I think are the main problems of this kind of interpretation. Aristotle likes a very much uh, example with triangles. And uh, among the example with triangles, he likes uh, the, 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 the theory, the property that a triangle has the sum of the interior angles equal to two right angles. I will call it 2R for, yeah. because I will use it a lot of time in my talk. And the property that the angle, the triangle inscribed in a semicircle is right. SC, I will call it. And I will consider three passages that are the very known mathematical passage in Metaphysics Theta 9, where Aristotle speaks about 2R and SC in two passages strictly correlated, and a passage from Posterior Analytics, where again the two problems are considered together. First passage. Why I quote from Aristotle, but is very short. Why does the triangle have two right angles? Because the angles around a single point are equal to two right. If then a parallel to the side were raised, by simply observing, the reason will, would be clear. Now, the reference to, to Aries Clear. But it is not so clear what kind of proof of 2R Aristotle has in mind, because the only fact we can reconstruct from here is that a straight line must be drawn. What? Ah. Was drawing ah, okay. <laughs> parallel to one side, and this makes evident that the angles around a point are equal to 2R. Then, two proposals are possible. The, these are the main proposals. One is obviously uh, Euclid demonstration that of the theorem 2R. What say, does Euclid say? Produce the side BC beyond C. Draw from C the parallel to the side AB and apply two times element to 29 for the theorem about the parallel line. In this way, one sees that the triangle around C was sum is clearly 2R. In fact, it is 2R because of element 1, 13, 13, are equal to the three angle of the triangle. We, you can see the, the proof. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I can see. I mean, yeah. All people <laughs> can see the proof. We, I, the angle, mm? but uh, obviously this uh, works, but too much lines have been traced in order to see. Aristotle says that the only thing we have to do is to trace the parallel to the side. Here we have the, we produce also the side. In fact, there is another more simple more simple proof, that is the Pythagorean proof, and it has recently proposed as the effective proof Aristotle has in mind, and this is better, I think. We have only a parallel line, we are in the same situation as in the preceding cases, and we effectively can see, without any other lines. Then we are in a, in a situation when, in fact, there is a proof that uh, match with Aristotle's statements. Okay, I will pass to the second uh, passage. In general, why is the angle in a semicircle uh, right angle? If three are equal, the two bases and the straight line lying orthogonally, or say, or say is the attribute of line, upon the center, just observing would be clear if one knows this. This is the property to air that he has just seen. 
Okay, also here the reference to SC is very clear, but here there is some more problem about uh, the proof Aristotle is alluding to, because in any case, Aristotle seems to uh, do a very big fallacy, because uh, he proves a general statement in a particular case, because there is this orce, this is the picture we can draw following Aristotle's instruction. We have the angle in the semicircle, and we have the two bases, the two lines are OX and OZ, and the third line is OZ, is OY. There is no doubt that this is a particular case. Then, two main proposals have been advanced for explaining this. The one is, well, Aristotle starts from these particular cases, but, the, but then he uses element 321 that says that the angle insisting on the same part of the semicircumference are equal, then I reduce to this case. That is the general case. And that is element 331. Is clear? Yeah. The second proposed solution is I saw the stars from this, uh, because from this uh, picture, then we have to excite, to eliminate or say from the text, and then we have the general case. Now, the, the first case is not acceptable because one has to add, one has to add element 321 in order to see, but Aristotle, Aristotle is insisting on the fact that we have only to draw the right line and we can see. This is not to see simply, it is to deduce a lot of things and then to see. Then this is the alternative proposal, but all the proposal change the punctuation, change uh, other things, or uh, eliminate, totally eliminate uh, or say from the text. This, this is a proposal, not philologically uh, sound, <laughs> but it solves the problem in, in a short way. But I'm not uh, very satisfied from this. And I go to the third passage that is from posterior analytics, for what reason is the angle in a semicircle a right angle? It is a right angle if what holds? Let right be A. Half of two rights B, the angle in a semicircle B explains why a right holds of C, the angle in a semicircle, for B is equal to A and C to B. It is half of two rights. This is the situation. Aristotle is talking about syllogism and. Eh? Right. Right. That's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> the problem is that uh, why to say that right is half of two right uh, is the reason for solving <coughs> the problem? This is a little bit. In any case, even in this case, some solution has been proposed. The more linear one is to take element 331, the demonstration of the fact that the angle in a semicircle is the right one. Here, I, perhaps I will skip the demonstration. It's very easy. It's very simple in any case. Do you want the demonstration? OK. Uh, you have to consider the two radius ready of the circumference, OX and OY, then this triangle is an isosceles, is the, the angle in, e, in X and in Y are equal. The same <coughs> is true for the other triangle. But that's this. exactly you. This is exactly, exactly. Okay. Yes, yes, this is you. I simply translated in formulas because not in natural language in order to make it more easy to follow. Then x, y, z is equal to y plus z. This is clear. Hmm? Now uh, in Euclid we find we found this 
demonstration. We take the exterior, exterior angle, Z, Y, H, and we observe that an exterior angle is equal to the sum of the other angles of the triangle, and then X, Y, Z is equal to Z, Y, H, but X, Y, Z plus Z, Y, H is 2R, then X, Y, Z is one half of 2R, but one half of 2R is R, then X, Y, Z is R. Okay, we reconstruct. The fact is that there, is, there are many other possible ways of producing the same result, for example, this alternative proof. The first part is the same, but then instead of use the exterior angle, we can use the fact that the sum of the in interior angle is equal to 2R. Hmm? The previous theorem. The previous theorem. Yes, in fact it is in violet. And we find the same syllogism. I prefer this proof and I will explain why. But in this case, here we have more than one proof that matches with Aristotle's statements. Okay, then I will go to my proposal. I think that we have to consider this three examples inside the uh, philosophical context. That is the procedure of knowing in Aristotle. Following the anima, what Aristotle says in the anima, Aristotle uh, thinks that there is a path from ignorance to knowledge that entails uh, three cognitive states and two gaps. This is something like this. We start for, from a state P1 in which one is a potential knower because he possesses all the needed requisites for gaining knowledge, and the state A1, A in which one actually knows. But there is a second gap between these states in which he knows, he possesses a knowledge, but he doesn't yet employ this knowledge, and the final state A2, then this is a state that is in some sense an actuality, but in some sense it is a potentiality because the actuality of this state real potentiality is the actual exercise of the knowledge. This is not so easy to understand because uh, in, in general, but Aristotle thinks that perhaps it may be useful to use a mathematical analogy in order to understand this. We can consider the many step process of problem solving that I, did, I, I said for Aristotle is a very clear procedure. Take a geometer in the face of a problem. Globally, a procedure of problem solving is an example of a passage from P1 to A1. Because the geometer doesn't know a result, for example, 2R or SC, but he possesses all the needed geometrical instruments for obtaining it. And locally, this procedure involves different instances of passages from A1 equal P2 to A2. Because in order to obtain the final result, for example, SC, the geometer has to use a lot of time some knowledge that he possesses but he has simply in his mind, for example, to R, or some uh, first principle or something like equals, minus, equals, R equals. Okay, even if the result is a complex intertwining of both, every single passage is clear and easy to understand if one has ever tried to solve, to effectively solve a geometrical problem. But what I have said just until now concerns the mental states of the geometer. What I have called the P1, A1, P2, A2 are mental states, are acts in the sense of mental states 
of the geometer. But the interesting point is that the procedure of problem solving tells us also something about how these mental states are connected with practical action. In, in Aristotelian <laughs> terms, how a state as an entelechia is connected with an, uh, an act as a state an entelechia is related with an act as an action an area. Okay? How is it possible? In order to move from potentially know something P, here it does not matter if it is P1 or P2, to actually know, knowing it, the geometer starts from an incomplete diagram in which all auxiliary lines are all only potentially contained. There are not materially here, but they are potentially here because I can draw. And through the action of drawing some of them, some of them, he generates the complete figure that is the, the one actually displaying the, so, the solution to his mind. This, it is a sort of procedure like this. I, I will go from potentiality to potential no to actually no with some practical procedure. It is this practical procedure that leaves no traces in mathematical textbooks. And this, a part of the procedure Aristotle is interested in, in his examples. Then, take again our example, now in a more, a little bit more conceptualized. Uh, I, the addition are mine are not in Aristotle's text. Geometrical relation two are found by actualization. I translated geometrical relation, but it must be also diagram, also proof, also geometrical uh, procedure. The, the, the diagram has all this meaning. Indeed, one finds them by dividing, by dividing the passage from P to A. If they were yet divided, if all the lines were traced in our diagram, they would be, would be evident. Now it is the case that they are only potentially present. When we start, we try to solve a problem, we have no the, the diagram we find in Euclid elements. We have something with something less, but I will come back to this point. Now, the first quotation. Why does the triangle have two right angles? Because the angles around a single point are equal to two rights. If then a parallel to the side were raised, this is a practical move, by simply observing, the reason would be clear. And this entails the passage from the mental states. Again, the other example. In general, why is the angle in a semicircle a right angle? If three are equal, the two bases and the straight line lying orthogonally upon, upon the center, P, this is the material passage, just observing it would be clear, as C would be clear, if one knows this, if one knows to where. So that it is manifest that what is only potentially is found by being actualized. The reason is that thinking is an actuality, those potency come from actuality, and therefore one knows by, by the way. This is complete quotation. Now, I will propose an alternative uh, interpretation of the two passages. The first passages concern the passage from uh, uh, P1 to A1 uh, in relation to the property to R. We have a geometer that moves from a state of potential knowledge of 2R to a state of knowledge of it. Potential, what does it mean that he is in a state of potential knowledge of 2R? He doesn't know 2R, but he possesses all the necessary requisites that are. He knows the basic principles 
of geometry. He knows the deductive rules of geometry and he has some dose of imagination in sight with nice good high perseverance, something like this. Then there is the phase of problem solving. In order to prove to her the, ge the geometrics drawn a diagram that contain only the, da the data of the problem. Maybe something like this, I suppose. Huh? But uh, perhaps he thinks it may be useful <laughs> to draw some auxiliary line in order to show something. For example, for example, the line parallel to one of the sides of the triangle, something like this. But now, if I am a geometer, I immediately see that the angle around the vertex are equal to the other two angles. And then I, I'm in a state of actual knowledge. It is not necessary, I think, that I have actually proved in a formalized way this result. The fact is that I have seen the result in my diagram and then I know after. I have to, I must produce a, 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 a proof of this result. But uh, concerning my mental states, I think that this is very clear as a procedure. Okay, second example. To use to R in order to know essay. Concerning the second result, we are exactly in the same rather exactly in the same situation because the geometer doesn't know SC but he has the parameter. He knows all the basic principle plus to R. He knows the deluxe rule, it has all oh, it is the same geometer as before. In the first in the final states he knows SC. But what about to R? Here we have a passage from a state P2 to a state A2 because P2, potential use of 2R, I know among the results of geometry that I know and the principle and the definition, I know also 2R. But I know I have not yet used 2R. But now I have to prove SC. And I have a diagram again. Now the, the diagram is something like this. I am looking through the diagram and maybe I see not anything but an angle, a triangle in a semicircle, I think. But now, perhaps I think it may be useful to trace some auxiliary lines, etc. And then I think that I will try this line and then, once I have traced this line, because I'm a geometer, I see three triangles and I think that I, maybe I can apply some, some property of triangle. I know I can apply to R. And I apply to R to the three triangles I have in my diagram and then I use the to R property. Okay. In, this, in fact, the macroscopic change from A1 to A2, from P1 to A1 concerning C, is accomplished by various local changes. I listed them, but I don't want to uh, enter in details, but uh, we have some practical drawing, and we have a list to application of 2R in these cases. I use for, uh, in this case, where? why I have listed all the passages. Because when you solve a problem and also when you make a formal proof, but mainly when you have to solve a problem, not all the steps are at the same level. There is a step that is the more important one and is the step at which I have the idea which solves the problem. And in this case, I, I am to the third passages, 
the idea which solves the problem is to read right as half of to write. Why to read right as half of to write may be the solving idea. Here there is the usual passage is the, the same. I, I don't read it. If you know, now you know this passage is the third one. But I can rewrite more explicitly our syllogism. Ah, right. Belongs. Right belongs to any half of two rights. Half of two rights belong, belong to any angle in the semicircle. Right belongs to any angle in the semicircle. Now, half, and half of two uh, right and half of two right doesn't mean very different. Apparently, they, but in fact, the second expression uh, gives more information because he holds a clue of the way in which the result right has been obtained. Suppose we rephrase your problem hmm? not why is the angle in the semicircle a right angle? But why is the angle in a semicircle half of two right angles? If I'm a geometer, I read the two right, and I think maybe I had to, I don't think, it's, it's something that in my mind goes uh, without my perception. Maybe I, I have to use the property 2R. I'm in a state of knowledge of 2R, because I am a geometer. And then, perhaps, the idea that I have to use to err is a good idea. And in fact, it is for this reason that Aristotle says that half of two rights is the reason for the angle in a semicircle being right. In a, in a syllogistic form, half of two right is the middle term. Because for Aristotle to solve a problem is, means to find the syllogism which has the solution of the given problem as its conclusion and the solving idea as the middle term or cause or, or reason. In this case, I can use also my, my particular case for showing this because what I have to show is not a particular proof, it's only these mental states. And in fact, I, I use the second. I made my passages. Now I use to have and I can. Okay. The, also, the other passages might be read in this perspective as a construction of a syllogism. They, are, they have exactly the form of the problemata in Aristotle problemata. In general, why is the angle in a semicircle a right angle? If three blah blah blah, one knows. Why? Blah, blah, because. In the first case, I, I have inverted the order because in the first case we, have ex, we are exactly in the, the, in the situation I have just described. It. But in the, last, in the first case, there is something more problematic. Because in the first case, the middle term, the solving idea was half of two right. It has a name. In this case, the solving idea has no name. And we are exactly in the case Aristotle explained in prior analytics 135, when he says, one, one must not always seek to set out a term with a word, for there will be often be globoi to which a name cannot be put. And the example is exactly the example, this example, because he said, it is for this reason difficult to lead such syllogism back. Sometimes errors can also happen as a result of this sort of search. For example, we can mistakenly think that the syllogism is from a middle things. Let A be the true right angles, B triangles, C isosceles is another example. Here the important part are A and B. We then A belongs to C, true B, but 
to be true nothing else for the triangle possesses two right angles of itself it, we may think that there is no demonstration there is no uh, uh, something between triangle and 2R but we have shown that in order to say that 2R is a property of a triangle we have to have the good idea there is a middle term but this middle term has no name because it's this the middle term is what happens around the vertex set. This is clear. Yeah. When I see what happens around the vertex set, I have the reason, I have the middle term. It is very difficult to translate in, in a term this situation. In a diagram is more easy. And then Aristotle can say that sometimes it seems that there is no middle term, but there is. It is not the uh, uh, usual logos. Conclusion. I come to the conclusion. Is time? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The setting of Aristotelian example is always the same. We have a geometer that tries to solve the problem, and he is equipped with a material support on which he has drawn a diagram reproducing the data of the problem. The first time I have thought about this, <laughs> I said that, that he has a sheet of paper and then the, the, ge the Greek geometer has not a sheet yeah. of paper. <laughs> then I use material support that is I don't know why, but a material support on which he has drawn a diagram reproducing only the data of the problem. I'm in a situation of P of I have a lot of possible line to be traced in my diagram, but I have no one yet traced. And it is equipped with a mental supply of known results, property, and theorems in his situation concerning a lot of theorems. Progressing in his job, the geometer traces, actualizes P to A, some line. But watch which line among the many traceable lines. If you have only this triangle and you have to trace some line, what line? And I have to trace the line in order to apply. I use line, but it can be other, some other uh, sort of form, but lines are the most simple. In order to apply, to actualize P2 to A uh, to some result. But which result among the, 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 the big quantity of geometrical result, the results I know because I am geometrical. And he needs also the right idea in order to choose between the lines, what line. As Aristotle says, if all the five lines were already traced, like in the final diagrams one finds in of its element, the solution would, would be trivial. In fact, if you try to solve the problem from uh, Euclid elements having the diagram in front, it is a very easy job. It is very different if you have only the description of the problem. In fact, in a real case of problem solving, it may be. There is some other difficulties that I, I don't want to consider now, but think about if one had a non-useful line and he just muddled the waters, as in the case of geometers who draw fake diagrams, the pseudographuntes, they have a name, these are geometers that draw diagrams or one could add the potential useful a potentially useful line but it could fail to see the right figure among the different combination the diagram present think about the diagram you have traced a lot of line then you are see looking at your diagram and there is something there is some triangle there is something interesting but you are not able for the moment to see it and it is for this reason, I think, that Aristotle says 
in prior analytics that I know that any triangle has two air, but I don't know that this is a triangle. It would be a very stupid geometer if he has in front of him a triangle and he cannot, he doesn't know that it is a triangle. This is the usual interpretation. I think that is completely stupid too. But if I have a diagram, and in my diagram I have a lot of line that muddles the, muddles the, the water, maybe I have in front of my a triangle, but I know I didn't see that it is a triangle. Then I can see it and can proceed with my proof. Okay. So we now have, we have caught an hour for a discussion. Half an hour? No. 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 13 minutes, 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Half, yes. half of an hour. Yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, who is going to kick off the discussion? Is Lorenzo? Lorenzo, perhaps. Me, yes. So, my, my, my intervention now is the specular. I want to say, it is not a question, it is just an integration. This events are a topic of the all Western thought. <laughs> so it is already present in, in Plato, because in the Meno there is this same problem in the lexicon of the doctrine of reminiscence, yes. where there is Socrates that teaches the slave to build geometrical di diagrams to solve the problem. And of course, Socrates say, I didn't teach anything because I am extracting. So geometry teaches Platonic philosophy, a big part of Platonic philosophy. In Aristotle, geometry teaches abduction because using diagrams is a leading way to solve the problem. So it is not synergism. Okay? Okay. So, then Kant, critical pure reason methodology. Kant says the same example of the triangle and says, in this case we are able uh, not to think stupidly like a philosopher uh, the concept of triangle but to make a construction and I will be able in the Kantian lexicon to reach and to discover properties that already belong to the triangle but that they are, they are not present. Finally, the problem is uh, present in Charles Sanders' purse, where this is an example of what I call the manipulative abduction. Yes. Then there are the modern words to describe the yes. things. But the uh, heuristics, these, these are heuristics. It is a kind of model based reasoning because we use model. And in the lexicon of distributed cognition, it is the relationship between internal and external representation. Yes. The the that problem is that this artifact. is not the usual interpretation. So, this is my problem. I think that is the absolutely. right interpretation, this and is, you think this that... This is good, because <laughs> this is uh, Aristotle that uh, teach to himself uh, the difference between uh, problem solving and uh, uh, the syllogism that doesn't work in this way. Because it is a monologue, like we said, okay, thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> so you two agree. So we want to find a questioner who disagrees. <laughs> what can you do with him? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. First of all, no, you're doing is an Aristotle expression. Yes. Uh, I translate uh, this. I try to find what it is. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yes, it's, it's, it's not mine. Yeah, it's so not mine. It's Aristotle. Second, so that this is an attempt by you of uh, extracting a theory of problems from Aristotle examples. Yes, is it, yes, it is an attempt to show that here he is talking about problem solving and not about uh, proof. Yeah, I, I was wondering if this account, that account. Uh, I mean, I, I can see that if it, uh, if it's, uh, well, I would say would be the uh, well-defined problem using Simon 
material problem when you know all the elements and you can you know the, the moves that you can do. Ah yes, yes, this is a particular case. It's a very easy case. In fact in mathematics usually you are in a very in a more simplified yeah. situation. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so the question is about the middle the middle term. So because I, I can see uh, how can the, this account can fit uh, the, 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 this kind of description, but in the search of the middle term, which is maybe the real problem solving, uh, maybe we need something more. That, I don't know. Yes, uh, is yes. This, uh, this is the, uh, he used uh, mathematical sample for giving a global idea. Then you can use topica, topics, and here we find all the uh, instructions for finding middle term. So the hypothesis, eh? which means the hypothesis. Which means, the no, which means the middle, yes, means hypothesis because uh, we need two premises, then two hypotheses, but uh, the, the only thing you don't know is the middle term yeah. because you know the first, the extreme, and then to know the, du the two premises means to know the middle term. Then, since Aristotle uh, devotes a lot of uh, writings to how to search for the middle term, here this is a particularly simple case. Obviously, okay, in, 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 in a case where the middle term is so evident that you, enter, you don't have to search for it. So because you but just it's not so line. evident. No, it is not. It is evident because I I I I have read the the solution before. If you were uh, in front of a problem, maybe in front only of this triangle without any other information, maybe if Aristotle doesn't say uh, half is half uh, right is half of two rights, because in, in, in your problem you have no this, this is the idea Aristotle say, when you think about right as yeah. half of two right, this is the, right, the idea, but when you look at the problem in geometry, you have no this here. If you, if you do not build the correct construction, you do not solve the problem. Yes, yeah. but, but, uh, why, why, why you are but also in the right construction, you have to have some if brilliant a, idea. A, a bad artifact in a laboratory, you do not yes, solve the problem. The right idea is something. <laughs> I think it was David next. Uh, well, I, I suppose so. Then. So there's a, there's a line of thought, I don't know Aristotle, so I'm not going to attempt to have any comment, but, but there's, so there's a line of thought in philosophy of science that says scientific knowledge is all knowledge that you obtain in some sense by doing. And so I'm wondering about sort of the, the scope of the Aristotelian claim or your claim inspired by Aristotle. Um, so the first geometer goes through the process Aristotle describes, say we grant that. But then I come along, and you know, one of the things about mathematics is I don't have to go through the process the first theorem prover did. I just can get the final proof. But maybe so I, no, no, so, so my question is just, in Aristotle or in general, do you think that what I do as the second person, does it mirror what the first person did? Or am I going through a different process? But Maybe you mirror the, the last tentative of uh, the person, the people for the first time tried. Because when I try to solve here, I have some very simple example. But when you have to prove to to show prove some last, you may you do a lot of tentative. Then the last one is the one. If I try to solve the problem for the second time, maybe I have this information and I forgot the first. But maybe I have to solve other problem, and for this problem I'm exactly in the first situation. Okay. No, but maybe. Right. Okay. Was a different question. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. Uh, um, I have uh, no, but no, 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 no. Um, just to hear uh, because. And um, when I read your proof, um, what am I going to do as a reader and receiver of the proof? Oh, yes, I'm in, I'm a, doing, I'm in a second. Uh, yes. Uh, in a way, um, who writes the proof uh, has to uh, 
uh, in a way, uh, give all the instruments to others to appreciate and understand the proof and consent with the result. Um, yes, uh, you have a proof. But here I mean, we, are are in, we are in mathematics. You are in when we find the, the, the proof, we can forget all the rest. Yes, but I, how can I, as a learner, not as a teacher. Ah, yes. I have but to reconstruct all. Maybe I reconstruct my proof in another way. Oh, yes. yes. This or is or what you, mathematicians do all the time. Yes. And the way. Or you can remake the proof. Yes, because if I have all the steps, I can reconstruct because I, uh, I only have no the steps that were, uh, were not uh, right then I can reconstruct the final proof he uses. But maybe I can reconstruct another kind of proof, adding I some... Yes, but traditions do this all the time, uh, to give new proofs of all theorems. Uh, this is important. But uh, the, the point is, uh, I was adding my something Kant said is the difference between learning philosophy and learning mathematics. You can learn philosophy in a and learn perfectly uh, the system of any philosopher you want to mention. And in that case, um, you, it is a kind, he said, of historical knowledge in the sense that you learn, you both are examined, and then you are proficient. But if you understand and learn a mathematical theorem, you are a mathematician yourself. Yes. In the case of a learned philosopher, you are not a philosopher in the sense you have either you learn how to be a philosopher, but you can learn what Wolf, Leibniz, Aristotle, Plato said, be a good student. You cannot call yourself a philosopher. You can go and be a very someone who proves to have read the relevant texts, mm. the relevant manuals. But if you understand um, not being a mathematician yourself in the sense wanting to extend mathematics really understand um, the, 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 procedure, theory, the, the procedure, the real procedure. Uh, yeah, yes, the theory, you are yourself a mathematician. Uh, there is a different approach from learning something in a passive way because you have to enter into more. But in any case, if, if someone uh, is, if someone tell to, to, to you something philosophical is a thing, if someone tell to you how to solve the problem, making all the steps. It's a very different that he says the, 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 the theorem is your, you are a mathematician yourself. While if you learn, uh, you will say, you give a textbook to a student and say, please, what did Descartes say in that book? Ah, but in that this case, is a, you are not This a is the history of mathematics. This is not mathematics. No, but you no. don't understand a mathematical. But I'm not speaking about understanding mathematics. I'm speaking about doing mathematics. But yes, in a way you have to do it. You have to go over in the yes, you are not the you are not Pythagora, right? But if you understand that that theorem, this means a, a deeper understanding than understanding a, any philosophical piece, unless you learn how to philosophize. You can even passively According to God. I, I yes, I'll give you. I'll give you. Chapter. I don't think that you can be a passive mathematician. I'm completely. In the past, you can. You can. You can learn write mathematics, written mathematics, yes. but if you have to create mathematics, it is not a passive uh, work. Oh, but exactly. to be a mathematician means to create mathematics. Yes, but. Well, even in learning mathematics, according to Kant, there is a different. Kant is not subject of this lecture. <laughs> well, one yeah. last question then from yourself. Yes. Uh, why are you contraposing so much with Euclid? I understand Euclid is much more polished, but after all, there is very much the same attitude. I mean, uh, Euclid's axioms are construction. They say trace, draw, and the tools are then really yes. like tracing. But he drawing. he say. Trace, draw. When he says that this is a, the right construction, 
He doesn't say, uh, uh, Euclid doesn't say, trace this line. No, no, this line is the wrong one. One, trace this, this line. No, no, this one also is wrong. Or trace this line. No, all oh, this is wrong. No, oh, maybe I will try tomorrow. This is not. Sure, but because it's an accomplished age, man. Yes. So that's right. And we cannot extract the information about the lost. But indeed, there is or to do so there is a precision of the construction. And as you said, by the intermediate point, here uh, Aristotle or you reading Aristotle points out the cool point, as today we discuss about why it's true of a very simple mathematical statement from us last year. So the statement from a statement is there. In order to prove it, you have to invent lots of new structures. You know what it means. It means typically you have to correlate groups and categories of groups and topological space. How do I do that? Let me invent natural yes. transformation, which is a very complex diagram, which forces you to, to specify what is a function. And then you have to give the notion of a junction, which is a very complicated mathematical structure, which but not there, not in the axiom of a committee, not in the statement. That's exactly what you've been yes, describing. Yes, maybe the, there are very simple examples. If you had some more complicated example, to have the idea is something more complicated. It may mean, it may mean uh, to invent something new and to you use it. Let me take the tool. There is no relevant theory in mathematics that doesn't require the invention of a new mathematical structure, which was not there. So you, this taking of the tool is very well focused by the intermediate step, which may get really to major. I mean, Rather than because we inventing lots of things. Why? Because it is totally false to believe, like formalists, the part, formalists part of the way of mathematics, that proving a, a, a theorem is proving a already given yes. formula. Maybe there is, uh, I, I was think, uh, talking about some uh, example in Aristotle that he used to explain something out there. And he used some very simple example, and he has no the uh, target to explain what happens in solving mathematical problems. And Aristotle never speaks a lot about what does it mean. And all these things would be in a treatise that uh, is devoted to explain what does it mean to solve problems. Here I have uh, an analogy with a particular simple case of problem solving. As a source of analogies. Yes, the, the point is from that it is so easy for Aristotle. Mathematics is something so uh, simple for Aristotle that he can use it for drawing analogies. So I read, I read another point. Maybe yes. the first uh, part. I, mean, I, think, I, mean, I think we will have to draw. May I just a suggest, may I suggest that Aristotle uh, demand this proof oh. to one. But it's the same. Yeah, not exactly. It's, it's more specific, it's this one. I mean, the test of Aristotle is just similar to this one. Yes, yeah. but it is, it is exactly well. the same. I, you can... Uh, you <laughs> can no, but you can't do it. It's not exactly the same. Thank you.